Um, this is going to be Vlad Filipov talking about how to supercharge, supercharge web application prototypes with the App Engine Python SDK. Great. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, so 20 minutes of App Engine. Who here used App Engine before? Awesome. Okay, so half the room. Uh, uh, let's see. So um, I'm Vlad. I'm a web developer. I use Python, a lot of JavaScript, and basically love everything about HTML5. Uh, it's my Twitter and uh, GitHub. So what I want to talk about today is, are the uh, developing prototypes using App Engine. And uh, when you develop your web app, uh, you want to build a unique, uh, if you have a unique idea, you want to uh, have unique features and uh, you want to quickly see, develop it and see if it works. Uh, and uh, later on, if your app is successful, you want to have a well-defined and structured data store and also have an epic <laughs> test coverage for all your uh, features, your API, and uh, your interface. So the problem here is uh, development time uh, always takes forever. <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of repetitive tasks, such as setting up the data store, um, uh, setting up like, your team up, uh, creating the, uh, the front end, the back end. Uh, user experience uh, in the recent years is, became very important. And um, again, uh, local development and your team, if you work at an agency, always changes and you have maybe dozens of projects you're working on. <clears throat> So I want to take this example. This is uh, an app called Gather At, uh, which uh, lets you create gatherings. Uh, it's built in PhoneGap, I think. So it's all um, uh, like a, a web app. Uh, you can they deployed it to iOS and Android, but they can easily uh, create uh, a web version of it. So you, this is what you see when you first start this application, and uh, um, a really simple view, but there's a lot going on here. You can, uh, and I just, I'm showing you uh, how to add entities. In this case, you would be adding gatherings. Uh, there are different layout types. You can view the map or just list the gatherings. Uh, you can filter them and uh, refresh uh, the gatherings uh, around you. And uh, <coughs> if you're creating this, uh, if you had an idea for this gathering app or any, uh, any mobile app, uh, there's a lot of interface that's going on here, and you can um, it would be nice to have an API that will give you, uh, you'll have a RESTful API to test this prototype and see if the idea works. Um, so I decided to use App Engine and see how fast can I make a, either a clone of the Gatheret app and uh, um, see how App Engine can help me uh, develop my, my prototype. <coughs> So just uh, background for those who don't know, uh, Google App Engine lets you uh, uh, build and host web applications in Google's cloud. It was in uh, preview in 2008. Uh, it was out of preview in 2011, and it supports uh, 2.5 and 2.7 runtimes. And basically, you pay for instance hours, uh, bandwidth, and storage. And you also get free quotas, uh, which are like daily limits uh, that you can have 10 applications for free uh, with daily limits. And there are all, also, for the Python SDK alone, there are over 20 built-in APIs. Uh, blob store, channel API, which is just like a socket API, so a lot to explore. And uh, <coughs> three data stores, and one of the important data stores, which is the uh, NoSQL object store. So prototyping with, uh, web, with App Engine, why I chose App Engine to do uh, my gather Reddit clone, for example. Uh, it would let me try out my application idea really quick and see if it works. Uh, for example, if I want to list uh, gatherings around me, see like how can I uh, develop this app. Um, it, it can uh, help me prepare for a larger project. Uh, if, for example, if I'm creating a large meetup site, I want to have the gathering component alone and see the, the gathering component would be an important feature of my app. So I want to uh, prototype it alone and see how well uh, the idea works. And the uh, benefit of App Engine is the simple data store. Um, then you also get the deployment. You get a local test server, and the, you can deploy it into the cloud really easy. Uh, you also get the user API. You can use the Google accounts or, uh, for, your, uh, for your users, or you can use OAuth, too. So you don't have to write your own uh, auth, like log in, log out, and create your own user models. You can just use the Google accounts. Um, really easy to set up and really helps you during development. 
Also, uh, when I'm developing, for example, if I'm developing the small gathering uh, feature of my app, um, I can work on testing, testing for my API, uh, testing for my, inter for my interface, and then when I actually work on a, on a larger project, um, I can use um, I can use the existing test in a, in a larger project, and if I'm if I'm if I'm writing a more complicated API later on, I can reuse the test that I made for my prototype, and I'll show you later uh, later on how that works out. <clears throat> and uh, the whole point here is to create uh, having the data store and having this whole Google, Google App Engine backend. Uh, it will let you have realistic scenarios for your user experience, um, and what I mean by that, if we go back a bit. Uh, if we just look at the refresh button on the bottom corner, if, um, w if you're just developing a front end, uh, it, would it, it would probably just, if you click refresh, it would just delete your HTML and put the new HTML in. But what, if you have a, an API backend, it will actually make a request, get the data from the server, uh, show some fancy graphics maybe while, it, while it's refreshing, and it will be a lot easier. The front end team will see, okay, so maybe the application takes too long to refresh. Maybe um, just the UI doesn't work. So having uh, a backend of, uh, as an API really helps um, during development. <coughs> uh, those who never seen App Engine, this is another basic slide here. This is what you get uh, when you just initialize a new app. You get the app YAML con uh, configuration file where you can define your runtime, you, you can define your uh, uh, URL handlers and libraries that you use. There are over uh, 20 libraries, I think, that uh, ship with the 2.7 runtime, and also some environmental uh, environment variables. Um, and you also get uh, this uh, directory structure where you get your app YAML file, uh, the index YAML for your automatically generated uh, file for your data store, and you get uh, a main.py that is, I think, part of the handler there in line 12 uh, that catches all your URLs and that. Um, when you download the SDK, you get this cool GUI view that, can, that helps you run the local test server, uh, view the logs for the local test server, and uh, the, the buttons there uh, let you deploy into the cloud easily. You just type in your uh, Google account, login, and it deploys it for you. And those who love uh, the terminal uh, and don't like GUIs, there's al also the terminal, uh, just the scripting uh, thing you can use in the terminal to up, uh, deploy your app. And this is what you see when you, uh, this, is, this application uh, shows the memory usage for a couple of days. Uh, this is actual uh, deployed app uh, in the cloud right now. And uh, you see all these fancy charts. You get to, you can view your data store. You see all the logs. And uh, you get application settings. So just the basic slides to show <coughs> what you see in the dashboard. The data store, uh, really simple. Uh, you can define your models. In this case, I define a PyCon friend model here. Uh, it has a name, a uh, string property, and a picture. And then I can just call from anywhere from my app. For example, if there's a controller, I can make a new instance there, set a name, set a picture, and just do friend.put, and that will save it to the data store. Uh, I, I can also, there are a couple of methods uh, to get the entity, get and delete, delete entity. And you can also save asynchronously and get asynchronously. And this is just another basic slide for, the, who, for those who never seen App Engine. Um, you can uh, browse your data store and write uh, JQL. For example, in this case, we're exploring the vote uh, entity, and we're listing all of them here. So going back to our prototype that we're building, uh, what's, what, what stuff does App Engine have that can help us quickly build this prototype? And in this case, there's a uh, Web App 2 framework that uh, lets you do routing, uh, write basic controllers, templating, uh, and uh, also App Engine has Jinja 2 support. Uh, then there are also two other things, uh, App Engine REST server, which is an open source project. There's Google Cloud endpoints that I'll talk about later. Uh, and a couple other features that will help you is you can import your data, some sample data, or maybe you have a predefined data, maybe locations of the gatherings are predefined or maybe your client provides you data, you can just import using CSV and then build your front end around that data. Um, again, uh, using Google accounts, no need to develop your auth, just use auth2 or login with Google. 
task queues. So if your application is heavy on background tasks, maybe it's performing calculations, uh, you can just use a task uh, API and uh, just start writing your background task for your app. Maybe, it's, maybe if it's some complicated um, calculation and a parsing, you can just use a task queue API and not worry about anything, all other stuff. Uh, app stats helps you uh, view, uh, basically it shows you the stats for the data store and you can see which methods of the, maybe for, for your API you use the most. And you get the awesome development server. Uh, there's a local development server, really easy to set up, simulates the App Engine environment and gets, gives you a development console. <coughs> So uh, I want to talk about uh, the App Engine REST server uh, project. Uh, it, it exposes your data model uh, using the uh, REST API, supports JSON, XML. Uh, you can view individual properties uh, and obviously entities by key. If you just go, for example, slash entity name, in, in my case it could be slash PyCon friend slash the key. Uh, you can do basic filtering, gives you uh, limiting results. So if it's uh, a mobile app that shows you gatherings, it can limit results by 30, and then you click. If you scroll down, it starts loading up more. Um, and uh, metadata browsing, you can, uh, you can view the entity and see what fields you have to. Um, uh, when you're using your REST API, you can see the fields you're putting in. Uh, it's open source, and I think it's a great starting point for those who just want to define maybe like 10 models and throw the REST server in and you get the REST API and you can then go to your front-end team or maybe you're the front-end team and start writing maybe a JavaScript app around this API. And uh, just a quick example here. This is how easy it is to set up. You, same again, I have a model uh, declared there, a uh, PyCon friend, only has a name in this case. And in my main PY, uh, as we saw earlier, I just define um, uh, a handler for the API, set it for the REST dispatcher, and then I need to define a base URL for my API. So usually, in my case, I use slash API. And I add the models I want the, to be exposed in this uh, REST server. In this case, I just put friend, and PyCon friend exposes the uh, PyCon friend model. <coughs> And this is what you see, like you, de you deploy your app, uh, you run it in the local environment, you, s you can go to a slash API, slash metadata, slash friend, and you get this XML output uh, for your uh, entity, uh, for, your, for, your, uh, for your model. And it also supports JSON if you uh, pass the right uh, uh, handler, uh, uh, right uh, content type. But for browsing, just in the browser, it gives you XML. Uh, but it's like it's a single file; it's one file for the whole uh, server. So you can just uh, get rid of the whole XML stuff and just use JSON if you prefer. Uh, and just in a quick example, you get a, what you get is you can just post, uh, make a put request. Um, you specify friend, new friend with a name called person. <laughs> And you get, uh, there's a response, it sets a key and sets the name of the person so you can use it with uh, um, your JavaScript application, for example. Uh, now another cool thing uh, that came out this year, it's still in testing, but uh, I'm hoping it's gonna be an experimental API of Google App Engine soon, which is uh, called Cloud Endpoints. And uh, so it, Again, it allows you to build uh, REST and RPC APIs. Uh, it uses the same infrastructure as, uh, uh, for example, the Google Translate API, uh, the Google shor uh, URL shortener, and supports OS2. Um, it has an API explorer uh, for your, the API that you built. And uh, an interesting feature, it has an ability to generate client libraries. So what that does is you can just, uh, it's only available in the Java version, but they're working on it where uh, you'll be able to write your API and then type a few commands in the terminal and it will generate, generate client libraries for JavaScript, iOS, and Android. So uh, you can just take the generated client library, put it in your Android app, and that app is ready to consume your API that you built using Python. Um, and it's a test, tester-only preview at the moment, but uh, it's really cool. I can't wait until it's in the experimental stage. Um, so here's uh, an example of one. I defined uh, my own, uh, this is a voting application, and uh, so it has a decorator uh, naming the API, uh, setting the version, some description there, 
and uh, has three endpoints. In this case, uh, there's a path for a put request to insert a vote, to get uh, the voting list, and to get votes by ID. Uh, so in, in this case, this is all I do here to define my API. Um, then uh, I just define an API server in my services.py and uh, set up a handler, a URL handler, um, for my uh, API service. And uh, then I deploy my app into the cloud, and I can go to the Google API Explorer, and I will see the methods I defined right away. Uh, and I can uh, go into them and, ex uh, and actually uh, use them. Uh, and I'll show you in a sec. <clears throat> so in this case, this is, the, uh, this, uh, this is using uh, the myVoteAPIVotes.get, and I can get it by uh, ID. Uh, it shows the request I made and then shows the response that yes, this is uh, the voting was yes and has ID of uh, 2001. So besides building this API, you can also write the test for it. Uh, and uh, there was an earlier presentation uh, about the web driver. So if you're if you're exploring ideas and you're just building the prototype and you just you you set up your data store and it's already the API is ready, the front end team is busy working on the interface, uh, you can start writing tests that you can later on reuse in the, in the larger application or the final version of the application, or uh, if, you're, if you just choose to use AppEngine later on, uh, uh, you can just save the test for the, for the AppEngine app. So in this case, it's just uh, a basic test uh, using the web test uh, library, uh, test my voting API, and uh, uh, just make sure it works properly. Uh, and the quick thing, uh, sam inserting sample data. Uh, I, what I want to do is, if I have my gathering prototype, uh, if I have a list of gatherings that, are, like for example, uh, JavaScript developers gathering in Toronto, I want to I want to populate that list um, for my for my front end and see how well my interface scales. So in this case, uh, I can create uh, I create a new endpoint. Uh, it clears all my, in this case, it clears all the votes in the voting app and uh, then populates it with some random stuff. So in this case, it populates the uh, voting outcome in a different uh, length strings so I can see how well uh, my UI works um, uh, with, with a, like long uh, strings and all that. And then and later on, of course, you can make it more complicated if, if you have a complicated model. You can set, uh, for example, different dates. Uh, if you have um, the descriptions, see how well the UI works with different descriptions. Uh, so just to conclude, uh, prototyping uh, and with App Engine or any other uh, framework that you have, uh, the point is you would invest time in unique features of the application. And uh, instead of worrying about all the boring stuff and repetitive tasks, uh, and again, uh, I suggest to record your time, how much, you sp how much time you spend in repetitive tasks, and try to improve your workflow. And for App Engine, again, it's easy to set up, great for exploring ideas, um, really easy to set up the data store. And uh, there were a lot of questions, just final note there, uh, this morning in the keynote, uh, how, how to teach people, uh, maybe web services and stuff like that. And I think App Engine is a great tool for that, where it takes, you don't have to spend time creating, uh, setting up local environments, creating data stores. It just helps you um, uh, or just write Python code and uh, see what works. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you. And there are more links. There's a lot of resources at that, at that URL if you want to read more about cloud endpoints uh, and all that stuff. So 